Hey there, Diocese of the Rio Grande. I know you remember Katie Hudak. Katie, it's a joy to be with you. Tell us where we are and where you're serving and a little bit about your ministry since you've been ordained. Well, we are in Alpine, Texas at St. James Episcopal Church right now. Um, I actually live in Marfa, Texas, which is about 25 minutes to the west of here. And I am the curate in the Big Bend. And so that means along with Father Mike Wallens, I get to serve five churches here in the, in the Big Bend. And um, I've been here since November of 2022. Wow. wow. It's been that long? Yeah, it has. It, it has. has. It's been that long. It doesn't feel that long, but it, it has been that long. And um, I, get to, I get to serve on Sundays during the week. We do morning prayer on Wednesday mornings. That is broadcast out to um, the rest of the diocese, if the diocese is interested in tuning into that. Right now we're doing it at 9 a.m. because people were like, 8 a.m.? Really? <laughs> And I'm like, it should be at seven o'clock. <laughs> and they and just, that's nine a.m. Central time, uh, yes. right? So and it they, is eight o'clock in the in the, in and, the yeah, mountain yeah. time zone. But people just look at me when I say seven a.m. and they go, I don't think so. So <laughs> you're an early riser. Uh, yeah, I am. I, I'm I'm an early riser, um, and I'm concentrating a lot of my time here at St. James, um, mm -hmm. and we are moving this congregation ahead with. The Holy Spirit, please, Holy Spirit, don't forget us here. And um, so we have a Taze service that we have started, and that's been attracting a couple of people. We had somebody here today who said, I used to come before, now I'm coming back. So that was really great. Um, and we're going to do Paint a Saint, led oh, yeah. by, yeah, led, led by uh, Kendra Jones, who um, actually did a lot of artwork in Italy, and, and she's one of our church members. She's amazing, and, uh, and confirmed yesterday. She was confirmed yesterday. I got to baptize her on Easter Sunday, so that was <laughs> wonderful. And, um, you know, we're looking at getting the Bishop's Committee up and running again. We're going to have a, a retreat exclusively for St. James here in a couple of weeks and concentrate on, on that. Um, but I get to meet people in all the other areas of the Big Bend as well, from Lajitas and Terlingua and Fort Stockton and here in Alpine and Mar Marfa. And I just really love the people in this area. It's a great, great experience. It's a wonderful area. And, and I am really pleased with how, I mean, the, the last time I was here, Alpine was really hit hard by the pandemic mm. and was really down to just a couple of people. And really struggling to, to get going. And we thought at that time, if, you know, I've been saying around the diocese, if the congregations continue to feel we're on our own and we can only get what we can afford, mm -hmm. then what will happen is we'll have to close churches. But part of what happened here was, first of all, Mike Wallen said, I'll come over there and help out a little bit. And there was a time when he was serving all five by himself, That's which made right. me nervous because, yeah. I mean, it was wonderful that he would do it. But I was also worried about that. And so the diocese partnered with St. Paul's and Marfa. The trustees purchased the vicarage, which you're living in now. Yes. The diocesan budget helps pay part of your benefits. Yes. So that you can have a full-time job. Yes. And we can have two full-time priests serving these five congregations. And then there have been a couple of retired clergy who have moved into town, and that's wonderful. But if we just have to rely on the nearest retired priest who happens to retire and move to town, we're kind of stuck. So this this partnership that now has you and Mike kind of as the anchors caring for the five churches is showing growth in all of them. It's been wonderful. Yeah, so I think one of the things that has happened since I've been able to be here um, and get the this experience as, as a full-time priest allows Mike to even do more out in the in the community and that you know the word is getting out the yes, word is getting out it is it is i mean you all are doing amazing things with youth you're doing amazing things on the border with the border patrol and with the migrants coming through as part of a coalition of churches and kind-hearted individuals all throughout 
the big bend. We're still running Otrevez, which is the the shop out in Terlingua. And uh, the congregations are growing, and you get to use your Spanish as yeah. well as your English, That's, right? So tell yeah. me about the community here. I understand it's about 60% Spanish speaking here and 40% Anglo. Mm -hmm. And then as we go closer to the border, it goes it, to 80%. It, right. So in Terlingua is one of the places that I really get to use my, my Spanish. And that that's a really great and interesting community because what happened this year was the community decided, well, we would want Eucharist once a month. We're doing a hymn sing once a month. We're doing a Bible study um, once a month. And we're doing um, actually the rosary one, once, once, a, once a month. Yeah. And we get about 14, 15 people with that hymn sing every month that's amazing from all over the Terlingua community and um the bible study um the last one that i was at the the one woman was talking to me she's a um a, a teacher at the at the uh, school in the school system and she was like i can't talk to my friends about god and about spiritual stuff because most of my friends are atheists and I said, well, you know, they're people too, you know, we, and we love them just yep. like anybody else. And, and she said, but I can talk about that yeah. here. With and this we group. like to talk about God. So yeah. come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, yeah. so this is your first cure out of seminary. How was that transition? Because you were raised up from the diocese, attended the Bishop's School for Ministry. And I know y'all were a tight class. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> still are, which is fabulous. And, and so how, how was that transition? Had you thought about being full-time employed as a priest coming through? Was that a change? Was this a possibility ever in your mind? How did that all happen? Yeah, so I, most everybody in my class at the Bishop's School of Ministry were mostly retired people or on the verge of retirement or only working part-time. And I was working full-time. Full I was the director of development with, it was then called Diocesan Migrant and Refugee Services. They now changed their name to La Estrella de El Paso. Mm -hmm. And um, that's in the Roman Catholic Church. It is. Um, and <laughs> you know me, big mouth, lots of opinions. Um, and I would, I complained all the time. I said, if I have to be a bivocational priest, I'll be dead after my first year. You might, you might, because you were working really, really hard. Yeah, about 50, 60 hours a week in, in my Plus in the my bishop's gym. school. Yeah, right. I mean, that was intense. And, and you know, different church stuff on the, on the weekends. Mm -hmm. So somebody said to me, Katie, there are full-time jobs as yes. priests. Yes, yes. Um, and right when I was ordained, um, I was still, I was being bi bivocational for almost about a year mm -hmm. and, um, you know, acting as a supply priest at St. Christopher's in El Paso and sometimes at St. Albans in, in El Paso. Um, but then this opportunity, it wasn't that this opportunity opened up because this opportunity was there. What opened up was the Holy Spirit working was in me. your heart. Right, yeah. right, right. Here <laughs> yeah. I am, send me. Yeah. And, and so... How did that feel when the Holy Spirit kind of opens your eyes and heart to something you hadn't imagined? How does that feel for you? Well, it was, well, hit me over the head with a spiritual two-by-four again, God, you know? Um, mo mostly, sometimes God has to do that with me but how does that exactly feel i mean we're not talking about an actual two or four right? no so like, no no so what what is it that like, it, it's like happens? the scales fall off of my, your okay. eyes or yeah. or something in you kind of changes or shifts mm. and i was like oh yeah oh okay i could maybe do that <laughs> i could maybe do yeah. that and yeah. and so that's what it it felt yeah. like to, to me yeah for me i when i'm engaged in a particular ministry I focus on that. My head is kind of down. I'm not looking at the horizon. I'm not wondering what's next or around the corner. I'm just here doing this. And in my experience, mostly what God does is start shutting all the doors. <laughs> like I keep uh, trying to go forward and boom, I bump into that and boom, I bump into that and boom, I bump into that. And then all of a sudden I look up and I go, oh, 
maybe there's something else over there. <laughs> That's what I mean by getting hit in the head with yeah. a spiritual two by four. It's like you keep trying to do this and it ain't working out. It's not working out. And oh, oh, there's some, yeah, there's something, mm -hmm. there's something else, yeah. you know. And at first it kind of feels like, eh, and then it's like, oh, wow, you know. Because it's been a good fit. Yes, it yeah. has. It, it, I really, a uh, concern that I had was, you know, I'm a city girl, right? I said, well, I'm going out into the middle of nowhere, you know. And driving two hours between churches. I mean, yeah. th people have to understand if you're not from the West, when we're talking about serving five churches in the Big Bend, we're not talking about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 45 minutes down the road. We're talking two hours from here to Terlingua, two hours from here to Fort Stockton. It's only 30 minutes over to Marfa from here. Right. But but you you put some miles on. I, I bought an... My husband insisted I buy a new car, um, I, I, and I bought it in January of 2023. I have 30,000 miles on Already. it. Wow. Yes. <laughs> and it's some of the most beautiful drive. I mean, the it's thing is, absolutely this gorgeous. part of the world is just gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's ab absolutely gorgeous mm -hmm. here. Um, and that's a benefit because that helps my spiritual life. As I'm driving along, I go, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good sermon writing time as you drive, thinking about what you're going to do and say when you get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's been really wonderful for for me. Oops, and um, that's been really wonderful for me. So, um, and the people have just been so accepting of me. Um, an interesting story happened. Um, so I'm often in Lajitas on Saturday afternoons, which is the furthest point away that that we serve and um right on the border right well yeah, yeah it, pretty much yeah right. mm -hmm. and so um different people from different denominations will come in and this one afternoon this couple walked in i went and introduced myself to them they weren't regulars they were you know visit visitors which a lot of folks are who go to lajitas and they were Roman Catholic. And the fellow looks at me and says, where's Reverend Mike? <laughs> <laughs> or Father Mike, he said. He said. Yeah. And I said, well, there, there's Father Mike and, and myself. And he pulled out the advertisement, the little paper, and he said, it says, Father Mike, here, here. And I said, well, today you, I'm, I'm, today. I'm here. Yeah. And he, he didn't, you know, he, okay, you know, I invited him to communion and everything. He he didn't come. His wife his wife did, and um, but by the end of that service, he said, "I didn't realize the Episcopal Church was so similar to the Roman Catholic Church." And he left a big donation in hey, the, we'll in the take basket. It. We'll take so it. Yeah. so it was just really interesting to see all of that yeah. that yeah. play out. I guess it's an exciting part of the world because there are. I mean, there are. There are people with deep roots here whose families have literally been here for centuries. And, and the border here is very porous in the sense that people who live on both sides mm -hmm. and, and have relationships and family and business interests going back and forth, legal business interests, all of that. Kids come across to go to school. Yes. There are American citizens who live on the other side yes. who come across to go to school. And um, in the midst of all of that climate, then you also have tourists. Yes. Lajitas is like a golf resort. Mm -hmm. It's right there kind of on the border. Great place to come in the winter to play golf. Hot as blazes in the and summer. So it is. <laughs> Terlingua is a, was a ghost town, and, and this kind of town has grown up around it. And, and there's lots of tourists that come in. So it's this, And then the Big Bend National Park is right, right, there. right there, which is an amazing place to hike or backpack or canoe. or I mean, it's, it's just, just gorgeous. So... You have a fascinating mix of people, some of whom are visiting, some of whom come for six months of the year, mm -hmm. some of whom live there year round. Mm -hmm. So it's as a ministry context, it's really interesting. Yeah, it, it really is because it, it's like that old line from Forrest Gump, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. And so you just kind of have to go along with that. <laughs> One of the things I do is I always pray is okay jesus send the holy spirit to me because <laughs> i need to be inspired today. you and me too yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. well another thing that's interesting is both lajitas and trilingua we don't own the church building 
They're these Correct. beautiful church buildings that are owned by others, but they're eager to have them used for the purposes uh, that we use them for. And so that means we're part of the community in a different kind of way, doing the Dio de los Muertos at Terlingua, um, doing the Guadalupe liturgy, doing Las Posadas. There's a sense in which when we show up, people get it and they are a part of the community and they then sort of discover, oh, the Episcopal Church, didn't know about you all. <laughs> right, it's exactly, kind of exactly. Um, yeah, I, I, I happen to love Terlingua Me too. a lot. <laughs> it's just beautiful. It, it, so, it, and at the very end of December, Father Mike and I were able to um, celebrate the wedding of this young couple. And um, it was by a bilingual service. And that was, it was really unique. It was not just bilingual, it was bicultural because mm -hmm. we had the lasso and the arras. Uh, the, explain, can you explain those yeah, traditions the, a little bit? So in the, the Mexican Hispanic world, um, one of the symbols at a wedding ceremony is it, it looks kind of like a big rosary almost, mm -hmm. but at a certain point in the ceremony, you put this lasso, it's called the, the lasso, I guess, around the couple as a symbol of them being united mm -hmm. in, in marriage. And then the arras are the coins. And there was the exchange of the, of the arras where, you know, I'll support you. I'll, you know, and, and I'll support you. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's just really kind of beautiful. But this young couple was confirmed yesterday. Yesterday, I got yesterday. to meet them both. Yeah, what, yeah. A, what a wonderful couple. They yeah. Are. yeah, and and so that it's that kind of stuff that's it's just you know just wonderful. Mm -hmm. So what what are you excited about in the near future? What I'm excited about in the near future is seeing um, Saint James continue to grow. Mm -hmm. um, and bounce back and have the community realize that St. James is here and we're a great place to, to not just to celebrate and worship, but we're a great community of, of, of people that feel like a family. Absolutely. We just had a conversation with the congregation and two or three people when asked, I asked everybody, tell me, tell me what's good here. What, what's happening here? That Why do you love being here? And two or three people said, this is a place where I can be my full self mm -hmm. and I'm loved for who I really am. I don't have to play those games. And yeah. that's the kind of intimate, real, like it's real here. People actually know each other. You don't have to put on a front or wear the right, right. outfit. You're going to belong and you're going to be loved. Yeah. And that's because of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, the things that, uh, uh, one of my, my favorite things to do, is Bible study with the, the different communities. I really, I really love it because I get all kinds of different insights into, into okay. what's there. And the Fort Stockton community often says, this is my family. They do, they yeah, do, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, This is my family. Yeah. And I think it's that same kind of thing, you know, that they can, everybody can be who they're meant, who God meant mm -hmm. them to be. Mm -hmm. you know? And they're very diverse. I mean, yeah. it, part of the small town West Texas thing is, you got to get along with your neighbor because they're the only neighbor you got. And if the fence is down, you need them to help you. There's that right. sort of community spirit that's kind of baked into the culture here. But when that combines with the Episcopal Church culture, it really is a place where people who do not agree at all politically that's correct. have very different theologies, actually love each other. They tease each other. They joke about it. Um, and, and, the, and they like the, when we were at Fort Stockton two days ago, they were there were some real serious theologians there. Mm -hmm. They're asking those questions. You mm -hmm. know, they come and they wrestle with stuff, and they. It was fun. It was yeah, really a fun. Yeah, yeah. Community. So, and I, I and each community seems to have its own character, it which does. also provides variety, which I really like as well. Yeah. yeah, and and this you know going back to the our way of thinking in the diocese of the Rio Grande is if we stick with each church gets only what it can afford we're cooked because mm -hmm. we have lots of small rural congregations. But what you all are demonstrating here in the Big Bend is that having a team of clergy, not yoking the congregations or making them have shared leadership or shared budgets or all that kind of stuff, 
they all contribute to the work that you and Mike are doing, and they share as is natural and makes sense mm -hmm. outreach efforts, Christian formation opportunities, etc. So you get the benefit of all five without having to collapse all five into one thing. Right. It, so it's a model that I think we can replicate in other parts of the diocese because we are literally seeing every one of these five churches is growing, mm -hmm. thanks to you and Mike working here with the folks. Yeah, that's great. I remember when I, you know, I was called out here and you announced, I, I guess it was at con convention in November of 22 and people are clapping and clapping and going, what's the big deal? <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, it's a big Dawson experiment and it's working, which is, yeah. which is great. Yeah. I mean, we still, we still have some financial hurdles to clear. Sure. Because, um, you know, it takes a while once someone joins the congregation and they get really involved. It takes a while for them to invite friends and for the stewardship piece kind of lags the growth of the congregation in terms of people. But what we're seeing in every one of these unique congregations is the community is growing. Yeah. And that means we're sharing, you know, we're not in it just for growth. We're in it to share the gospel. That's right. And that's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great. Yeah. Katie, thank you for your faithfulness to follow the call. As your bishop, I'm grateful that you're here. Come out to the Big Bend and see these beautiful churches and the wonderful people that are here. Yeah, it's great. Y'all come down here. <laughs> <laughs>